Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host Black Blackfoot's Attorney and you're watching Channel 2, NeTV. Let's get into it. Another episode of Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright, or Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. <sighs> Alright, let's get this shit. Alright, where was we? Turn about goodbyes. Finally. Finally, another day of trial. Alright. December 27th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Okay. Court is now in session for the trial of my, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Apparently, the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Very well, so no opening statements. So, dude, you cannot object. Bro, this dude's already pissing me off, and we haven't even really gotten into the trial yet, bro. Dude, like, what, what, what whatever, whatever. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. R right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Oh no, this man done did, this man done did something. I already know it, he did something. Alright, I don't feel like knocking my desk. I don't wanna, I don't wanna break this desk or something on this desk. I already hurt my hand one time doing that, so yeah. I'm not gonna do it anymore. Order, order, Mr. Von Karma. What is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah, must you question everything? Nigga, he's the judge! That's kind of his job? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. We're right, right. I call my witness. My decisive witness to the sand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Witness, state your profession. Nigga, fuck your ass up. That, uh, I am the proprietor. I am the proprietor of the restaurant at the Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. And uh, I also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, uh, yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard of, we still haven't heard who this old guy is. I feel like I should raise the objection, but then let's just do it. The, objection. objection. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. What now? Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah. Um, but aren't you supposed to kind of state your name? That's kind of like the whole point. Because like you can't. Can you go into court anonymous? I don't know. I might have to. I want to look that up real quick. Hold up. Like, can you go to court anonymous? Can you can you stay anonymous in court, or do you have to state your name? Can you stay anonymous in court? It would be unconstitutional for a witness to remain. Um. Okay. I predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. The witness will state his name. Wake up. Well, uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, yep. What do you mean? My uh, memory, Your Honor. The witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Uh, he cannot recall, you said. Yes, but the incident took place... The incident in question took place three days ago. He testified. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we? Witness... The night of the murder. Witness his testimony. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight, I up. I was in the restaurant where uh, I rent boats, as usual. Then I heard a bang, I up. 
When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore, and the man walks by my window. Hmm. Very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Sir, you can't do this! You can't make... <sighs> That's why I hate people who, who take their job way too seriously. Bro. The high and mighty Von Karma. Bro, we gonna get you. Does he get... I wanna know. I really wanna know if he gets fired after this, but I'm not. I, I don't. At the same time, I really, really hope he gets fired, bro. Because, like... How are you, how are you out here just hijacking the whole thing? Like, you're just basically doing the judge's job. You can't be judge, jury, and executioner, bro. You're just the prosecutor. Like, like, sir, sit down and do the job that pays you. Like, like, bro, just because you have 40 years of experience and you haven't lost a case once, that don't mean nothing at all. There you go. No need for cross damage. Besides... There are only 10 seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now. Er, yes, M Mr. Wright. Cross-examine? What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Hmm, very well, you may begin. Yeah, excuse me, Mr. Von Karma? Three minutes just passed. I see. Well then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. Thank you! When I talk to you, Ray, I'm surprised he seems so sure about it today. I asked him and he remembered, isn't that right? No, no, go at me like that. I, uh, yeah, I remember clearly I did, I yep. Uh. Oh my gosh. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats, as usual. Oh, I'm getting tired. Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. That, that's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what is not good enough. Your Honor, Your Honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on my girl, Keith, you boy. Keith, the prosecution can prove, concedes that we cannot w prove the witness was in the shot. Witness, please continue. Can I heard a bang? I'm gonna press you on everything, bro. Then I heard another bang. Wait, I just realized he didn't object to that one. Hold it. So you heard two gunshots total. Hey, yep. That's what Lotta said in her testimony is Just about them. The man comes back to my shore. Alright. By your window. Uh, yep, by my window. Right outside my window. Here. And could you see the man's face? Well, then the oh. That's a rather important detail. Please add it to the testimony. I have a bad feeling about this. And that man was the defendant saying, I can't believe he's dead. What? Are, are you sure? Mm. Dad. Dead certain. He, he said, I can't believe he's dead as he's walking by, too. Hey! Witness, are you sure that this person. Are you sure that the person you saw was Mr. Miles Edgeworth? It was him. That Edgeworth boy. Did he just fell over? <laughs> this sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. 
Von Karma, who lured me into cross-examination for so he could set me up for a fall. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quick, or this trial is gonna be over. Uh, 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 well, what do I have to lose? Objection. Objection. Your Honor, we proved yes in yesterday's trial that there could not have been Edgeworth who could have fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun and the photographs of a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. <laughs> that is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. Hmm. The judge has lost her thought. What should I do? What do you think, bro? Like, oh my gosh, you are stupid. Oh my gosh. Objection. Like, object. This witness claims that Edgeworth, it, that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead, but, this, but his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie, Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say this testimony is a lie, show us proof. Nick, do we even have evidence? It's so good, there's nothing I can do. Are you sure, to be honest? I don't know what to do anymore. Please, can you hear me, sis? Please, we need your help. Nick needs you. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. 15 minutes? That all really passed in 15 minutes? Uh -uh. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. I mean, dude is literally knocked out right now. This court sees no reasons to... F Wait, what? Wait. This case is extremely clear. No. What? No! This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Wait, no! Guilty. The accused will surrender to the court immediately. To be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today. What? No! <laughs> what? How was that supposed? <laughs> what am I supposed to do, bro? Wait, hold up. Let me get the let me get the music, bro. Where's the music? Hold up. I need the music, bro. Are you kidding me right now? Oh my gosh. How did we lose, bro? We had no. They didn't give me a chance to, like, give me evidence, bro. Oh my. Bro, how they really gonna tell me he is guilty? Like. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess let's see what let's see what happens. That is all. This court is adjourned. What? Wait, wait! Wait! What? Huh? Huh? What? Who? Who? Who was that just now? Me? Huh? Wow! Larry, wait, when, did, when the hell did you get here? W what are you doing here? Listen, you, you gotta listen to me. I, I was I was there, in the park, the night of the murder. I I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday, but, but today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. Oh my... Order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for an adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So, you... What the heck is on my screen? So, you say you heard a gunshot. Yes, I did. A gunshot. That night. I was sitting here, in the audience, listening to the testimony. Then, I realized something. He said... So then I realized, something he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I just can't sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's... It's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. Order. Order. 
Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. <laughs> he could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there's another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. Well, you are the judge, so you can do that no, no, no matter what. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to present to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What? What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Wow. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now! What? The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. Dang, he actually bossed up for there. For a second there. Nah, bro, hold up. I need to... <laughs> I mean, that was just, I mean, wow, that was a roller coaster there for a second. I'm thinking I lost, bro, because I, because I, see, I never seen what it looks like when you get guilty. So I'm over here thinking, what? I'm really, oh, shoot. I'm over here thinking, I really just lost that. They really just. Like Von Karma really just defeated me like that, but then you mean to tell me that my not even Maya did this? It was freaking Larry of all people, Larry. This dang, like the dumb friend turned unsung hero, I guess. Cause what? This man really out here. Came out of nowhere. Like, where did he come from? Was he just watching the entire time? Why didn't you say nothing? But, I guess... Whew! That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Hmm. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're just sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night. Yes, he was, yeah. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake, also causing people to look for Gordy. Bro, these headphones are incredibly cracked. I had to take these things just to keep them working. So, I'm gonna need some new headphones soon. Alright. And yeah, he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It... It's nothing. Hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then, I saw the pistol lying on the floor in the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. I mean, in that shot, you did see him pick it up with his right hand. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? But Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials. Perfectly prepared with witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That is the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has had he has to let someone he has to he has to have someone he hasn't even talked to testify before court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. 
No 10 minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was 15 minutes. 15! Everything's on Larry now. December 27th, 10.35 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Why do we keep switching courtrooms? I think, wasn't we in court, in the first trial, we was in courtroom one, then we went to courtroom two, then we went to three. Like, how many courtrooms are there? And it's always the same judge. Right, whatever. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Moncarma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth. I, ho I just hope Edgeworth. I can't even speak right now. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. I mean, I hope so. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and uh, I found it. So I quietly slipped it, slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Then as I was, then as I was, then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Oh my gosh. Hmm, that is an unusually vague test testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin the cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Well, we've come this far. There's no way but to go forward, Nick. Hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. First things first, let me look at the court record just so I, just in case I might have to, because I, I think, I feel like I am going to have to find something for it. Alright. Nothing for this, nothing for these two. The parrot doesn't matter. Metal detector, why do we even have that? Shouldn't we have given it back to Gumshoe? Alright. The Gordy article. Feel like that? Nah, that wouldn't really work anything. Hmm. So he didn't see the boat, so he wouldn't know about the, about the two guys, so that don't matter. And he wouldn't know about the second, but the second late photo wouldn't matter. Or, hmm. I don't know. I was looking for something and I found it. Wouldn't be Gordy, we already know that. So I quietly slipped the boat back. Then that's the stuff. I heard a bang. I looked out and I didn't see a boat. So after I heard the single gunshot, I went home. So you heard only one gunshot, right? Of course it's the gun. Nah, I'm just kidding. That's not that's a dumb reason. Robert's autopsy report, no. I heard two gunshots, I heard two sounds just like gunshots after midnight on 12.25. Wait a minute, what? So you heard two gunshots, right? After I heard that single gunshot, I went home. It's, I feel like I could use that against. Lot of this, lot of this position. Objection. What? Well, wait a second, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs, and the old man just now heard the same. Said the same thing. They both heard two gun. <coughs> oh my God. They both heard two gunshots that night. That night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something that, you know, something bothered me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts, what? You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. What? Not 
not sure? How can you be not sure? Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, I uh, might have missed the other gunshot. Oh, was I listening to so oh, I was I was uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, with my headphones. What? Order, order, and stop that booing. M miss oh, they were booing him? <laughs> Damn. Miss Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah, who listens to the radio? Why? First of all, the game is... Okay, look, I get it. This game was made in 2001. But, like, did they really think people were going to be listening to the freaking radio? <laughs> like, who's listening to the radio with their headphones? I mean, I guess iPods and iPhones got the radio app. You can listen to the radio nowadays. But, like... Y yeah, so what? That a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness, nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue his testimony? Yeah! Continue! Your Honor, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who does not know when he's lost. Well, give your testimony and make sure it includes details like your radio. I wonder if there were any other. I wonder if there were any other way. I, I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this. Believe me. Mm. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. True. That's why I listen to an all request show on the radio. See, I was listening to it real booming loud. Like, I'm not sure I'm, if I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. <laughs> you were listening to your radio at high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe. Yeah, he does not judge. Can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was pr was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Objection! Wait, Your Honor. The, te the witness remembers the... Okay, wait. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway. Anyway, what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks in between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. And I'd like to cross the wit examine the witness, Your Honor. But very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Mm. It's Ronin, being alone on Christmas Eve. So you turned on the radio? Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know? You don't know what it's like out here there. Alone. On Christmas Eve. Alone. I shouldn't have said anything. Hold it. Do you by any chance to remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butt, how... <laughs> Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? Mm. Real booming loud? Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on. Yep. I wouldn't think... I wouldn't think you could hear it. <coughs> oh my gosh. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. And I'm sure I heard the gunshot. Can you prove that? No, no, no. Of course you can. No, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real quick. I mean, it was while it was. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back to clear as me, you know. All right. Well, what did the DJ say? What did he say? Or what did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could 
What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do to us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question if I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, well, do you know? No, well, how do you know if you don't ask? Fine, very well. Mr. Buzz, please satisfy the report. What was the radio announcer saying when he... Just when she... Just when she said, Hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Hold up. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm, maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there's one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've just got to press until we get into the bottom of what happened. Ah, uh, it's lonely being on Christmas Eve. Yeah, we've established that. That's why I was listening to the woman. Wow, wait, 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 wait. Go back to the court record. Wasn't there a... Second late for 11.50 p.m. And that was before, that's just before Christmas. Um, if it's just before Christmas, wouldn't that mean I need to show the second late one? Or, or wait, no, 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 no. That's the one with only the, that's the one only with the, uh, dang it. Okay, so when you heard the gunshot, she said, hey, it's almost Christmas. That means this happened on the 24th. If I present evidence that, it can't be this, this is just an empty lake. If this lake photo was taken at 8, at, uh, at 12, 15 a.m., then that means that this, then how could that be? If the, if the gunshot was, if this shows the moment of the gunshot right here. This is, um, this is before 12, 15. This is 12.15 a.m. This is before, um, the, uh, this would mean, I mean, no, this is after Christmas already happens. Well, or after it turns to Christmas. So that would be, <coughs> that, <coughs> that would mean that this did not take place. Wait, no, if, ah, uh, I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is, like, what could, what happened is, this one right here could not have if he shot the guy right here then this could not have taken place um this could not have taken place at 12 15 a.m if if they said it's almost christmas when you hear the gunshot so boom nigga. larry are you absolutely sure about what you're saying is correct hmm What's with the sca what's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easily. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would that would seem to make sense, yeah. That would seem to make that would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard that gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefutable proof of that fact. Let's see what the time on what the time was on when the photo was taken. Oh my gosh, I can't even. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Mrs. Mrs. Hart Miss Hart's camera. Yep. Twelve. 125005. I mean 0015. 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order! Order! What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. Wh what? Hmm. 
well, Mr. Wright. What do you think? What do you think about um? Ugh. What do you think um? Oh my gosh. What do you think about? Okay, if I say he's wrong, then that pretty much would just undo everything I did. So he's got to be right. There is not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard the gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have the evidence for this wild claim. Show me the evidence that the gun was shot before midnight. All right. All right, take. All right, then take this. Boom. Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on this photo was reads December 24, 11:50 p.m. Oh, mm -hmm. but there's nothing in but the lake. Oh, there's nothing on the lake in this picture, Your Honor. The real issue is not is not why nothing is shown in the photograph. It's why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean, Your Honor? This photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. <laughs> Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that it, that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming that she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It was. It is a fact that the camera was also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Objection. Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes. There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Well, Mr. Wright, there is no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court. Uh... Wait, hold up. Wait a minute. The murder weapon, a, 20, a .22 caliber, fired three times. Hmm. So, there were... So let's... That would clear everything up. Think about it. If the gun was fired three times, one gunshot could have been fired before midnight, and then the other two after. Take that! This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, when, then was the mur- When, when, then was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the, th was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order, order. Hmm, that would make sense of uh, that would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves us what this leaves me wondering what exactly did happen that night on the lake. Yeah, like if the guy got shot once, then what were the other two shots for? Test shots? Like I'm confused now. Exactly. If this is true, there were two that there were two sets of gunshots separated by twenty, separated by twenty five minutes. One at eleven fifty, and another at fifteen minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? Uh oh, I'd rather better think of something. Quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by twenty five minutes. Ah! What, what's wrong now, Nick? I I have it. I have it. Huh? Remember the case with the steel samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course, I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in this case. What do you mean? Maya, yes. If we don't figure it out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe?
say? We've already gotten the guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You, you know, you just watch me and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared, has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So, you finally realized the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. And a man was shot. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. <laughs> there was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, well, the guilty party has no... The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit, it is hard to believe any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. W what do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then. 25 minutes before he was shot on the lake. That's the only other way Edgeworth could be innocent. What? Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain why the two men, explain who the two men on the boat are. I don't freaking know. Wait a minute. Okay, it can't be Edgeworth and Hammond. It can't be Murderer and Hammond. It's Edgeworth and the Murderer. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the Murderer. After the Murderer killed Robert Hammond at at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. W what? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. L ludicrous! Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right, it's... The... I don't fucking know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You, you don't know? Again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do, where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? Might I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not on a boat? W what? Well then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. He did it at the boat shop. Here, of course. The boat shop. Where he lives. That way, he could meet the victim without anyone seeing it. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night, he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. Uh, Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? 
please tell the court from the beginning. Y yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and then take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. <coughs> that night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Damn. This was around 11.50. That was, the gun that was when the gunshot that Larry had heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put, Robert, put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. And then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. And then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Oh, it's the boat shop caretaker. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Y yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look into the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit before he fires the, again. Then, he jumped into the lake. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. To, be, to someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put, then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and then threw the body into the lake. This is when this is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff, bailiff, bring out the witness from before. Wait, what? Oh, the boat shop. I really just stumbled over my words like that, bro. How did I? Bro, why? Why would I do that, bro? Oh my gosh! <sighs> I'm just embarrassed now, cause that was just that was worse than the others. The boat shop caretaker quickly. <laughs> wow. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go into the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishing, astonishing, astonishingly show a... How did I stumble over my words like that, that badly? Astonishingly so. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed, Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said that he has something very important to discuss with me. Well, midnight on Christmas Eve would actually be Christmas Day. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. You're, but your honor, your honor. Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? F find him, quickly. I, we cannot allow him to get away. Bro, this man then fled. This man fled the scene, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It was him. Yeah, it was him.
Like, this man really just ran away. How you gonna run away on us like that? All right, well, I think we got that. So, well, now what? So we found our murderer. So, okay. Wow, that's... Uh, but I don't know, because who knows? Whatever. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a, wor a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all of its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. December 27th, 1.22 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Yay, Nick, you did it. Yeah, well, at least we got, we got out un from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out, sure. Once I sifted through this unique testimony, still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could, could you, you could try to, you could try to smile a little. Relax. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. W what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there is so little time left. I want to tell you, to get it off my chest, but... Hmm? I, can, hmm, I cannot make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. What? To be continued. Nah, bro. What did this man Edgeworth do? Yeah, save my progress. Alright, so we don't need the day two investigation. So now we're going on day three investigation. Alright. Alright, well. Oh, well. We'll do that. I'll probably know me. I'm probably gonna just record it right after this one because I did the last episode I, rec I literally just finished the last episode and started this episode so that I'm probably gonna do next episode after this one But I don't want to have like a two-hour long episode. I don't Like unless it actually warrants that I don't feel like doing those so we'll end it here and so if you're looking forward to the next episode and if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more just like it or similar to it please don't hesitate to comment like and subscribe stay tuned for more and i will see you on the flip side from channel 2 me tv i'm your host black one's attorney signing off but damn though i know i'm supposed to do the outro right now but damn bro this this plot just gets thicker and thicker. It's like so many different twists and turns and loop de loops and whatnot. Like. <laughs> <laughs>